The H. Taylor Peary Institute was, was established specifically to um, promote and, and help students that, that had uh, career objectives in the financial services industries. Scholarship support, research support for the faculty, and the, the actual outcome has been outstanding. The Peary Institute of Financial Services is the hallmark institute of the finance department. We attract some of the finest students at the university, and we place these students in, with some of the finest organizations around the world. H. Taylor Peary was a successful businessman and financial genius. During his 34-year career, he progressed to the top ranks of Bank of America and founded a real estate company that helped build today's Silicon Valley. But more importantly, he was a friend to everyone who knew him. He was attentive and devoted to his family. He served faithfully in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and he left behind a legacy of kindness, hard work, and dedication to doing the right thing. He was a very dynamic individual. He had great wisdom and he had great vision. And people respected him because he was a man of his word. He was the type of person that uh, had a great understanding of the gospel and what it really meant. His whole life was so focused on doing what was right. H. Taylor Peary's parents, Horace Eldridge and Sarah Jane Taylor Peary, were part of a prominent family in Ogden, Utah. Horace was concerned about the spiritually damaging effect that prosperity seemed to have on people near him. He wanted his children to learn to work hard, be true to their faith, and appreciate the value of the things they had. His father decided that he'd take his four children and go to California. The family moved to Porterville, California, where they purchased and took care of orange groves. The grandfather had pretty good wealth, had good things going for them, but they wanted to get away from that influence. And they did a good job in getting away because Porterville was a pretty hard place to be living. Life took a drastic turn only two years later when Horace passed away. Much of the responsibility for nurturing the orange groves fell on Sarah Jane and on Taylor, who was the oldest of her children. He worked very, very hard to support his mother and was very, very conscientious of the fact that he was, quote, the man of the house. My grandmother thought, I need to have a job for him so he can develop the work ethic that he needed. He got a job at a local store, I think a grocery store there. That corner store gentleman, he liked my father, but he said, I can't afford this. I can barely make it as it is. My grandmother actually paid the guy at the store to hire him because she wanted him to have that experience working. These valuable early experiences of working hard through rough times shaped Taylor's character throughout his life. After graduation from high school, Taylor was called on a mission to Germany. He loved the German people. He made deep friendships there. He learned the language. When Taylor returned from his mission, he started classes at Stanford University. He set up his own orange juice business, and that provided the money necessary for him to finish up his MBA training. He got up and he would deliver orange juice to the school every single day. He was a man that, that uh, said, okay, I'm going to go out and I'm gonna work and I'm gonna make things happen. With schools, hospitals, and homes as customers, the company grew large enough to include 15 employees and four delivery trucks. Proceeds from the orange juice company sustained Taylor through school and left him several thousand dollars to begin his career. After graduating from Stanford with a BA in 1927, Taylor headed straight to the nation's financial center, New York City, to spend the summer researching investments for a national investment trust firm. On his way, he made a stop in Utah that would change his life. He went to visit an old family friend. He always stopped by to see Dr. Rich. He loved that family and they loved him. And uh, my father 
all of a sudden saw this beautiful woman coming down the stairs. He hadn't seen my mother for many, many years. And now all of a sudden she was a woman. She was beautiful. Uh, just a beautiful, lovely lady. Mary and Taylor corresponded frequently during the following winter and early spring. On September 12th, 1931, Mary and Taylor were married in the Salt Lake Temple by a close family friend, David O. McKay. Taylor returned to California and completed his MBA at Stanford Business School in 1929. He began his career as an investment counselor for Brookmine Economic Service. After working three successful years with Brookmine, Taylor accepted an offer extended by A.P. Giannini. The president of Bank of America, Amadio Peter Giannini, was the finest banker this country had ever produced. They did not suffer from a depression in California. Giannini had it so nobody got kicked out of their houses. Nobody in the bank could profit off of somebody losing their car or losing their house. And that was uh, the kind of people that uh, Taylor was working with. But A.P. Giannini was so enthralled with, uh, with Taylor that he hired him to run the portfolio of the bank. For most of the next 26 years, Taylor commuted by train to San Francisco. Taylor not only kept an eye on promising real estate developments, but also on the stock market. Taylor's investment successes didn't come without some valuable learning experiences. During graduate school, he began investing money from the orange juice business in the stock market. The first few stocks turned to profit. Taylor began to wonder why he was going to school when there was such easy money to be made. Then he thought, hey, you know, I could leverage this just great. I can borrow two or three or four times as much, and so I'll make so much money. Well, on his birthday, back in the 30s, they phoned him in 29 or 30 when the crash was, said, you're broke, you owe money. That was a big joke for him. He later commented that his early investments gave him a good foundation because he learned from his many mistakes. Over 24 years, Taylor worked his way up from clerk to vice president of Bank of America. In my father's dressing room, he had a picture of his grandfather whom he really, really respected. He never really knew him, but the stories came down. He was a very successful banker, was a stake president for many, many years, and he trusted people. And so my father loved his character, the way he handled his family, and that was his ideal of what a man in the church was. My mother's influence was a key factor in my father becoming his best self. He really loved my mother. She lived all the principles and exemplified and showed in her spirit. Taylor and Mary would add two boys and a girl to their family. We were really pals. He always showed up at things and was supportive that way. It was just his nature to be a part of life. Taylor made it a priority to teach his children wise investment skills and the importance of working hard. His philosophy was simple, 10% for the Lord and 10% into a personal savings or investment account. He told them that the result would be personal wealth and happiness, a combination the world rarely achieves. My father was frugal. That doesn't mean he was a cheapskate. That means that he was very careful with his pennies, but he was very generous when people needed special help. But he never just tossed it away, and he knew what a penny was worth. As the United States entered World War II, Taylor Peary took a sabbatical from Bank of America to serve his country. He had the opportunity once again to travel the land where he had served his mission years earlier. But this time, he witnessed devastation. Blocks upon blocks upon blocks of buildings destroyed, people homeless, their goods, anything that they possessed taken from them. He served as a lieutenant colonel on General Eisenhower's staff of civil affairs. Taylor was assigned to help Germany revive its economy after the war. He knew the language, he knew the people, he had a rapport. His experience in Germany would influence his understanding of poverty and suffering, of inflation, and significantly, of the value of land and real estate. 
when I'd ask him, why did you get in real estate? And he'd say, because during the war, I saw the devastation. But the one thing it endured was the piece of land, the earth. In 1955, Taylor Peary left the bank to pursue his lifelong hobby, real estate. He asked if I uh, would like to go see these properties, which he was now invested in. And I said, absolutely. They were gorgeous properties. A lot of them were orchards. And it was just amazing how many he had. He'd been investing in over the years. What began as Peary and Company in 1957 has become one of the nation's most successful commercial real estate companies, Peary Arriaga, built on the principles of careful analysis, avoidance of unnecessary debt, and wise use of resources that Taylor learned from a life of experience. In 1942, an LDS family moved into a house three doors down. David Haight and my father were best friends, and they would joke back and forth and enjoy uh, their friendship and having our Saturday barbecues together as two families. I was the little Sherpa that hauled the barbecue tables between his house and our house. Elder Haight said, Taylor Peary was a dear friend and the type of individual that you could discuss any problem with and he would understand. He was wise, considerate, and tender-hearted. He really felt strongly uh, to the very, very end that the most important thing that you could possibly attain on this earth was the testimony of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He was always very easy to talk with. He always had a smile on his face. Uh, just a real great guy in every way. He had a great personality. He was strong moral character, um, very ethical in everything that he did. My dad, I found out, had ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which he died of. And I knew at that time that uh, he was going to die within five or ten years at the most. He didn't want to go to the hospital because he knew that was it. When I walked in, his eyes just twinkled. He, there was nothing wrong with his mind. His mind was as keen as ever. Nothing ever left as far as the knowledge, but his body was completely limp because his muscles had all been deteriorated. And I remember writing a, big, a letter back to him, expressing my love and gratitude to him for all that he had done for me, what an influence he was on me. I wanted to do everything better because of his example. I wanted to be like him. As I turned to say goodbye, I knew I'd never see him again here on earth. And that was the hardest thing I ever had to do was tell my father goodbye. And he smiled and I smiled, but it was difficult. On August 1st, 1964, at the age of 62, Taylor Perry passed away in Palo Alto. He never forgot where he came from. He was consistently H. Taylor Perry, keen, alert, kind, and generous. The H. Taylor Perry Institute of Financial Services was formally announced on September 26, 2001. Students go out uh, not only representing now the Marriott School and BYU, but representing H. Taylor Peary. They've got that idea in their mind of who he was and what he did. The qualities that H. Taylor Peary had that I would like to, to have are hard work and integrity. If I can um, embody those same characteristics, I'll be in a good place. H. Taylor Peary has shown that the more you push yourself, the more your capacity to give and to change other people's lives too. As I looked around the classroom today, every single one of those students has been greatly blessed. The Peary Institute has helped to provide the opportunities for the students to reach that full potential. I've, I've seen what's happened in the last 15 years. The undergraduate finance major is now putting out 180 students a year. The impact of that is huge. And I don't think any of it would have happened without uh, the support of the H. Taylor Peary Institute. The, the Peary uh, Institute of Financial Services has given our students the opportunity to uh, travel, to do internships, to uh, take exams, to participate in case competitions around the country, to expose them to many people around the United States and other places. I want to say thank you to the Peary Institute donors because they've changed my life. They helped me in pursuing my dream job. That strong foundation, I think, 
is helping me build a life that I can be proud of and that I think God can be proud of. Thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart because I wouldn't be where I'm at if I hadn't have had that. The, the Marriott's and the Peary's have been wonderful supporters of the Marriott School and they have for many, many years. They have given up their, their time and their effort and their resources to, to help wonderful students uh, penetrate a world of uh, professional management in ways that will bless the lives of that, the students, their families, and anybody they associate with. So we appreciate what they have done to expand the goodness around the world because of their efforts.